next time. I want to, um, uh, before I get to the Arab Boker thing, I, I want to include another addendum in here on holography. As we're talking about light, this is, th there's an analogy that emerges from this that I just couldn't resist sharing with you, so this is just an a, a extra thing here. There's a thing called holography. An 18th uh, century Frenchman uh, created a thing called the Fourier transform. Engineers are very familiar with this to, to change things from the space domain and the frequency domain, the frequency domain, space domain. We use it all the time in engineering for complex waves. But the point is, in 1947, Dennis Gabor, who got a Nobel Prize for his invention, he was trying to improve an electron microscope, which in those days was pretty primitive and deficient. He was working on that when he discovered what we know today as a hologram. And uh, modern holographic images really derive from the work of Emmett Leith at the University of Michigan. And I had the privilege of being with him in his laboratory in the early 60s, looking at some computer-generated holograms. And so uh, uh, holograms are, uh, it's worth your trouble to stick with me here to see what a hologram is. Let's assume I have a three-dimensional object. I'm using here the bust of Lincoln as an idiom on the slide. And I have a piece of photographic film, OK? I can arrange a laser beam to flood that uh, image directly, OK? And I'll call that the reference beam. Because the laser is very collimated, I use a beam splitter, a spreader to spread that over the spread of the, the image. I can also have that same laser deflect some of its light and shine it directly on the object of interest. You with me so far? So I've got the laser driving an illumination of the film plate and the object simultaneously by highly, highly organized light. That's what a laser does. It's temporarily, uh, uh, it, it, it's in phase altogether. So light will reflect from the bust onto the film, and it'll also get light from, directly from the laser. What you end up with on the film, when you process the film in a darkroom, you hold up the light, and it looks like a fog piece of film. You think it's a darkroom mistake until you set it down, and you shine the laser on that piece of film, and you discover it acts like a window into a three-dimensional space that was in front of it when this thing was formed. And it has some very unusual pro that's called a hologram. It's some people call it lensless photography. It's a little misnomer because you do have some lenses trying to organize the light to get it where you want it. But, but uh, so the point is, there's a, what's on the film is what mathematically is a Fourier transform of the image. It's not in the space domain, it's in the frequency domain. And that has some profound implications. It acts like a window in three-dimensional space. Let's imagine you have three a hologram in three-dimensional space. And as we look at it, as we move our eye around, you can look around things. Let me give you an example. Let's assume that I held up my Bible and you took a photograph of me, you would not be able to see my tie, would you? But if you took a hologram, you could move your eye around the Bible and see my tie and tell what color it was. You follow me? That's what I mean by a three-dimensional effect. And uh, so it, uh, it requires proper illumination. It's useless in natural light. You really need to have it illuminated by a laser. I'm talking about a true hologram, not a synthetic one. Um, something interesting, the information of the hologram is spread over the entire piece. That has some, I could cut the hologram in half and get two complete pictures. If I took a photograph and cut it in half, you're going to get one half or the other, right? But if I take a hologram and cut it in half, you each have one and gives you a complete picture. One might not be as sharp as, you know, be a little, not quite as sharp as it was. You lose a little resolution. You can cut a hole in the hologram and it doesn't hurt you because you can look around it, see what was behind it. Follow me? See, every piece of information is on every inch of the hologram. It's spread, OK? Um, there's no loss from dropouts. It's also resilient to specific interference. There's no way to jam it, so to speak. It anticipates hostile jamming. Now, where I'm headed here, as you can probably tell, you have the equivalent of a hologram in your lab. Just like a, a natural hologram, in normal white light, there's, it has no form or comeliness. There's no, reason for you to desire it. But you illuminate it by the light that created it in the first place, you get an image. And when you take your Bible and it's illuminated by the Holy Spirit, you get an image of what? Jesus Christ. It goes, oh, by the way, if you illuminate it with a laser that's of a different frequency than created, you get a false image. Ooh. You're with me. You're, you're picking it up. I can tell. Okay, good. The Bible's a hologram. 
It has Fourier transform pr properties. It's, it's uh, transcendent of any parallax. And that's exactly what Isaiah says. Isaiah 28 says, The word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. What's he saying? The, the message of God in the Bible is spread throughout the entire Bible. You could conduct an experiment, take your Bible, randomly tear out a page. Don't literally do it, but do it conceptually. What have you lost? There is no important doctrine, no important truth in the scripture you will have lost. It's immune. It, in fact, it's been designed in anticipation of what we would call in communication engineering hostile jamming. There's no chapter on baptism. There's no chapter on salvation. There's no chapter. Pick a, a doctrine. It's not all in one place. It is deliberately spread. And that, if you're a communications engineer and you're given a certain bandwidth between two points and your job is to design a communication system to communicate to the, between those two points, there are a lot of ways you can go about it, but if you say if you want you to, they want you to design it in anticipation of hostile jamming. Someone's going to try to jam your signal. What do you do? You do several things, one of which is you spread your message over the available bandwidth. You don't concentrate it, you spread it, because it's harder to jam. That's exactly what's been done in the scripture. The scripture has been designed with a sophistication that will astonish you as you uh, get into it. So we have the Bible as a hologram. We have what, we, what the engineer would call spread spectrum design. It exploits the entire bandwidth and therefore has immunity to hostile jamming. I've often threatened to do this. Um, we're going to have a meeting tonight and we're going, at the meeting we're going to tear out the page of the Bible that's unimportant. <laughs> and then when everybody gets together I'll take the page between the Old and New Testament and tear it out and it's one book.